Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. The topic in choice of books here is plants, wild, edible plants is the focus. Well, I've been on plants. Now in my library, I probably have two or three hundred books. And it's kind of uh, difficult to, to choose the ones that you might say are your, your relevant and favorite ones. Well, here I'm going to indulge a little bit. Here's a book, it's called The Wild Flowers of the World. So here is a topic that is covered worldwide, except so you might find that maybe only uh, uh, 20, 30 plants grow here in, in this neck of the woods. But whenever I'm bored and I don't know what to do with myself, I usually open this book and I go through uh, to marvel at the variety of plants. And the illustration here is just astounding in that you um, <clears throat> can um, uh, just sort of look at how plants can be and what you would find if you went to visit Australia or what is a Caruglian cabbage or whatever with regard to there. And I would say that if your love of plants does not extend to the point where you acquire books something like this and just read them for pure enjoyment, well, you, you might be kind of a not very well-developed person, I suppose. I don't know. Here is a book called Country Harvest. And it's written for the United Kingdom, as far as I can tell. And of all the plants that are considered to be hedge, row, and wild plants in, in the UK, escapees from the garden, I would say there's about 40 of them that grow on my property here in uh, north central Alberta. When I went to England, I've, I've gone there on a number of occasions. I can run plant walks because the, the issue of the fact that I'm familiar with those very plants growing in my garden that were brought there and treated as herbs. And the layout of the, of the usages of these plants is also uh, you know, bordering on the artistic with regard to enjoying something that is so well illustrated and, and, and so well done. The Edible and Medicinal Wild Plants of Minnesota and Wisconsin. I don't let the title of Minnesota and Wisconsin deter me because they examine the book. I say they could have also said and Alberta. And, and the issue is that you expand your horizons with regard to laying your hands on quality books if you just don't stick to your own particular geography, you might say. And this book uh, is well written by, uh, by the, the, the author in the sense of uh, those that are anxious to acquire the knowledge of what wild edible plants are available to you. Edible plants, again, this is a, a book that lays out uh, certain notions uh, that increase your insights and education, gives you a more worldly view, and gives you an idea where a lot of the plants that we use today came from as well. And, and in the education, in the background of, uh, of having um, an insight into uh, what plants are all about and, and what the world of plants the plants found all over the world, well, uh, you, you find, I feel that there is a lot of merit in recommending a book like that to the learner. Here we have a book called The Edible Wild Plants, and it's written by the people who uh, have a long tradition in creating these type of manuals where they lay out very clearly. That is, I could study this book from cover to cover and not leave my living room and end up finding that the moment that I laid eyes on this plant for the first time, I'd know what it was because of the, of the way some of these plant books are, are, are set up. The Field Guide to North American Edible Plants. And I think uh, um, there's a Roger Tory Peterson might have something to do with that. Edible and medicinal plants of the Rocky Mountains and neighboring territories. So we have had enough. Um, people interested in our own backyard, that you're getting more and more books that are specifically 
uh, relate to where we live. And Terry Willard, who is well known for, for his uh, work in teaching people in herbal uh, medicine and all that sort of stuff, has come up with an excellent book, which at the same time deals with both the medicines. The food you eat is your medicine, um, and a lot of the wild plants are more medicines. <coughs> the one hazard we have with wild plants that we eat is, is the fact that many of them are poisonous. And this is the book written by the American Medical Association um, on, on what doctors should know about the poisoning aspects of plants. Now, this is uh, 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 another handbook that uh, ver focuses very strictly on poisonous plants written by three doctors. And I would say that uh, you're being foolhardy if you don't spend a little time focusing on making sure you don't die as a result of eating a, an overwhelmingly powerful poisonous plant. Um, we have a plant actually that uh, we grow in the hearth house. It's um, uh, a plant that I just recently read that when Napoleon's soldiers were were uh, having that tough time in Russia and so on, many of them died from using the, the, that particular oleander uh, as skewers for cooking their meat. And that was enough to poison them, to, for them to die from that, is to use a skewer made out of oleander. At any rate, when we see a survival manual, and it's got 10 pages devoted to the wild edible plants, uh, some of us might find that we have the time to go through seven books instead of seven, 17 chap <laughs> pages in a chapter. And it does no harm that if you wish to live off the land and incorporate the edible plants and the medicinal plants in, in, in your survival training, that your university education might be more around a pile of books instead of just a few uh, list, a short list of plants in any given book. <coughs>